Some viewers may find this disturbing. Your discretion is advised. Okay. How to write up a script without using only cuss words in it. Rosa, I know you're working on the next video, but since it's Halloween, we can do a Halloween video instead. So that means I have to review it? You're still doing it, just not right now. <sighs> so, what am I reviewing then? Straight out of nowhere. What? It's a Scooby-Doo crossover. Well, this is better than that other one. Oh, blue. Tension. Okay. Let's do this. Sorry, I just got back to see how Rosso was holding up with the video, and he had to go to the hospital. You wouldn't believe it, the doctor said he suffered whiplash. We'll cut to him after he just recovered, okay? Let's get moving. Scooby-Doo doesn't really need a setup, as one of the things Scooby-Doo is known for is he does crossovers with a lot of things. Harley Globetrotters, Batman, Blue Falcon, WWE, Batman, Kiss, Adam Family, Supernatural, and Batman. You said that three times. What? They did a lot of crossovers with them. What happened to your hair? Yeah, after my visit in the hospital, they thought I had head trauma, so they cut my hair to see if there was any skull damage. But you were in your home. Yeah, I know. 700 bucks for a haircut. Just get back to reviewing. Okay. Well, that was the introduction for all of Scooby. Here's a more simpler way of explaining courage. Courage! Cowardly dog! Abandoned as a pup, he was found by Muriel, who lives in the middle of nowhere with her husband, Eustace Bay. Gah! But creepy stuff happens in nowhere. It's up to courage to save his new home! <laughs> well, let's see how two scaredy dogs work out in this crossover. This is straight out of nowhere. The movie starts with the ending of a case, with Shaggy and Scooby taking selfies? Good lord, it's contagious! BB, it's a self-help app. Everyone has those sometimes on the phone. Heck, even I have one. Repeat after me. You are not insane. You are not insane. You are not hearing voices. Uh, at least it's getting better with the meta, and during our whole explanation, Scooby's having more of like a weird panic attack. And at the same time, Courage's panic music is playing as he bolts, leaving to nowhere, Kansas. Lucky for the crew, they have a tracking device on his collar. While on the bag's farm, Courage is doing the same with Eustace being Eustace. There'll be a dog whistle. Will you stop blowing on it? Are you a dog? No, but I can hear it like an air horn. Yeah. The two dogs meet, which I feel like this was the only way that they can get this to happen, as they discovered that hearing the same noise out of the ground, giant mutant cicada sprout. What? BB, this is courage. This is not even the weirdest thing courage has ever dealt with. Heck, this is not even the weirdest thing that came out of the ground. What are they? Well, fossils of a giant kangaroo monster, moles, a magical tree that grant anything you want, eggplants that want to kill Muriel, zombies, sand whales, and hybrid carnivorous plants that will eat people. What was your childhood like? One with good shows? The gang shows up to save them, and Muriel, with her nature, sees it as Courage made some new friends, and invites them over for dinner. And their meeting with Eustace is... how would it be like? He just didn't give a crap. At the moment, I respect that they kept the characters in their respective art styles, but when you compare the two together, it does kind of feel off, I will admit that. I find it funny that throughout that whole conversation with the Mystery Gang and Muriel, they're just talking about the career that, Mis that Mystery Inc. has, and in the background, Courage and Scooby are fighting a giant hair monster that is clogging the sink. They ignore that, but the moment a giant cicada is on Shaggy's back, he's freaking out. They're all freaking out. And Muriel just sees it as a normal bug that, when hit with massive impact, explodes. Ross, I thought nowhere is in Kansas. Why are the bugs so huge? But creepy stuff happens in nowhere. That doesn't solve it. That just points it out. Maybe it's courage. This is not the weirdest thing that ever happened in the series. 
You know what? Just keep going. Okay, moving on. After all that, Scooby, Shaggy, and Courage relax in the living room, and with the help of this of the app, they were able to share their feelings with one another of what they what terrifies them, and we even get to see Easter eggs of Courage turning into monsters and the other supernatural beings that were shown throughout the series. And with a knock at the door, they receive an invitation to the mayor's mansion. They're about to start traveling, taking separate vehicles, because Eustace doesn't want to share the van with the kids. The dogs join Eustace's truck, which gets hijacked by the cicada. And we see Scooby join with courage in an over-the-top freakout, which is weird seeing him do one, but it's also amusing. And we get a massive car chase, learning that Daphne is a, a massive mechanic as she adds stuff to the mystery machine, like a grappling hook, a nitro boost, and an anchor. They were able to rescue Courage and Scooby, and they get to the mansion where they meet the butler, Glockenspiel. Glockenspiel? Really? That's it? Besides the name, can you think of anything funny about the Glockenspiel? The butler invites the man as he go gets the mayor, and then the weirdest thing on the left field happens. The chairs in the waiting room sh produce fangs and starts attacking the gang, which it's okay if you understand the world of courage, but when Shaggy is asking his app to help him calm down in the situation, the app decides to sprout arms and legs and hides in his pants. This is one of the things I didn't want to talk about yet, but there, are, I have some issues with crossovers. Number one, the world's logic. Each crossover has their ground rules of how their world works. Scooby-Doo is more grounded, depending on which series we're, and variant we're dealing with. Courage, on the other hand, is a little bit more wackier. Though they do explain where all this wackiness comes from, it still has two different rules and logic. Besides the fact they have two scared dogs dealing with situations, these are like two different series. Another issue I have is the fact of they barely use much of the characters. Throughout the movie, we have Shaggy and Scooby doing stuff with Courage, Velma gathering clues and information using her tablet, and trying to solve any riddle that Muriel gives her. But with Fred and Daphne, the chase scene is the most that we get out of them as Fred's driving the mystery machine and Daphne's the one who added all the mods to it. What about Courage's side? Well, Muriel was always the oblivious one and the only reason Courage is actually doing these things. While Eustace is more of the negative type, only doing things if he gets free food or money out of it. Most of the time he won't leave his chair. And with the fact that you have to try to make it for both sides to have equal standing, it kind of feels more they show more favoritism to Courage than they do with Scooby-Doo. And I'm just questioning why did they call it Scooby-Doo meet Courage when it could have just been Courage meet Scooby-Doo. Name recognition. <sighs> Makes sense. They meet the mayor as he does a quick lesson on Nowhere before having to leave for work, and everyone splits up. Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Muriel leave to learn more history of Nowhere. Shaggy, Scooby, and Courage go to the kitchen to make a sandwich. And Eustace goes home because his sandwiches are way better than the one Scooby makes. I don't blame Eustace. I wouldn't want to eat one of those sandwiches either. Why? Because the dog's making the sandwich? Unlike Scooby and Shaggy, my jaw can't unhinge. And also, if I'm pretty sure if I eat one of those sandwiches, I'm never going to leave the bathroom. I'll save you money on storage. Oh, ha, ha. The mystery group goes into a part of the mansion, which there is a pile of Courage Cowboy Dog Easter eggs. And turning on a video, we get the announcer from Courage giving in a brief lesson with more Easter's. Oh my god! And this is why I kind of feel that the whole movie was nothing more favoritism than Courage, as it's stacked to the brim with Easter eggs. At the farmhouse, it was subtle that you wouldn't notice. The license plate, the TV, the wall, the picture frames. But once you get to the mayor's mansion, it is nothing but Easter eggs with Courage episodes of all of his villains, items, and everything else. Uh, it's all full-on Marvel with the Easter eggs. Scooby, Shaggy, and Courage sees the mayor getting attacked by the cicadas to reveal that the one that was attacking him during the car chase scene is a cicada queen. Which, after doing a quick research, Cicadas are not a colony insect like ants or bees, so that leads to more questions than anything. But we do get the classic Scooby-Doo thing, pranking the monster, the doorway chasing, and due to their shenanigans, the mystery group gets caught behind a trap bookcase to discover what they found. A sound wave machine and an auto dialer that's calling people 
to hypnotize them and Lucky for Shaggy and his group, they crash in, destroying the machine. Back at the farm, Eustace is enjoying himself a sandwich and we get to see what happened to all the people that were hypnotized. They are taking all their money, gold, and jewelry and delivering it there. Why the farm? I don't know, maybe to justify the fact that it's called straight out of nowhere. Huh? They stopped it so they could have Eustace doing a music video of all the money he's acquiring. Coming out of left continent will be taking it nicely. It's more weirder that it's rap. They were able to leave the mansion leading to a corn maze, but the cicadas molted to winged form and started capturing everyone with Velma learning the answer, hands them the tablet before getting captured herself. With the scared crew to panic, Shaggy hears the answer from his app and starts to give them a motivational speech on courage, only for him to also get captured. With the tablet in paw, we learn the most surprising thing. Scooby can't understand courage. They're both dogs! I don't know. Maybe because Scooby can speak English but doesn't know the language of dog while Courage, on the other hand, can speak dog and only know a few English words. That doesn't make any sense! I'm trying my best to bring in logic to the illogical. Here, cut me some slack! Luckily for them, Courage has a computer at the farm and they made it back, passing by Eustace's swimming in money, to... Weirdly enough, it's surprising that it could connect with Velma's tablet. Even more weirder that the tablet and the computer start hitting it off as they're about to start forming a relationship. What Velma's notes were able to tell us is that millions of years ago, a meteor crash landed on the location of where the bag's farm is. And because the meteor is composed of an unstable material of dark matter, is what's causing all the weird and creepy stuff that's happening in nowhere. I need a drink. Hair, hair. And the only idea that Courage and Scooby can think of is dig underground to that meteorite, which at the same time is causing their whole panicking. They find a meteor is connected to a machine controlling the cicadas and with the only option to escape. And lucky for them, they were able to find everyone else. With the queen hot on their tail, she captures Muriel and the meteor and causes a cave-in only big enough for Courage to get through to save her. And the queen, using the power of the meteor, turns into a giant and turns the area into a massive boss battle. Courage, ready to face his fears, fight the queen and causes him to turn into a giant for us to have a giant massive kaiju battle. What? Well, it's not the first time. Last time we had to be a giant kangaroo monster to do a kaiju battle. I have several questions that I need contacts for. Lucky with Muriel's help, Courage was able to defeat the Queen, save everybody, and it's revealed that the Cicada Queen is actually the Mayor of Nowhere, who is actually a robot being piloted by Cats and Laquack. And that Glockensfield is actually the General and the Lieutenant of the Army Base that's in Nowhere. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I think BB has suffered whiplash. Only if I know where he's at. Cats and Laquack's plan was to make a robot to be voted in as mayor so they can gather up all the info to learn about the meteor as a means to hypnotize people and rob the people of their finances and stash it in the farm. When Mystery Inc. showed up to the area, they decided to use the meteor to brainwash the cicadas that live in the area to scare them off. I know how I felt when I had to deal with it. The general decides to use the meteor as a weapon, but Courage has other plans. Using the meteor as a disco ball to have everyone join in with a massive dance party. While well, Eustace comes back in a towel questioning where all of his money went and is forced to dance with them. And that was straight out of left field. Uh, it's okay? Straight out of nowhere fails as a crossover, as we can see that they show favoritism to one side. On the Scooby side, it's bad, as it's a haphazard mystery with answers coming out of nowhere. Most of the characters can be removed and nothing would change, but it's still not the worst Scooby-Doo show. <coughs> huh? As a current show, I would say it's average. The characters play the roles that's needed. The madness that the villains did would make sense in this type of scenario. And I, even though they didn't have the creator of the Courage working on it, it didn't really work that well as Courage is a horror comedy with no horror. It's just comedy. But if you're a Courage fan, you will enjoy it if you don't get overpowered with Easter eggs.
But as a whole, it's not a bad movie. I wouldn't scream it's crap, but at the same time, I wouldn't remember it once it's all over. As a movie, you could show it to your kids, and I'm pretty sure they'll enjoy it with you, as it's not that long. And with the madness of Scooby-Doo's crossovers, I can't wait till he does a crossover with Avenger Time. That will be some real shenanigans! Well, that was an oddity. Well, happy Halloween! Enjoyable. Can't wait to see what's next. Well, that was something. Can't wait to see what we're doing next. The same video we were working on earlier. <sighs> Franculo Cuesta Film. Just because you swore in another language doesn't mean I'm not going to catch it. Mm -hmm.